dream. A new dream for the church and the world for 2020. Post-COVID-19 plague. Definitely, that's a free event for everyone. And uh, the following weekend, <coughs> May 21st through the 23rd, we're going to be doing Poverty, Riches, and Wealth. Uh, you like this one, Sue. Moving from a life of lack into true kingdom abundance. This is free to all members, so you definitely want to be there. Following weekend, May 28th through May 30th, the Experiencing God study you've heard so much. We're just doing the whole study that weekend. Definitely want to participate in that. And then for the kiddies who've been camped at house under your feet, all summer. This is a resident summer camp for teen boys and girls at Hope Retreat Ranch. Spiritual revival, renewal, and seekers camp for teen boys and girls ages 12 to 18. Uh, first week of camp begins June 8th through Sunday, June 14th. Week 2 of camp is June 15th through the 21st. First week they will grow spiritually by studying how to experience God in a meaningful way and physically through our physical activities. Second week of camp, they will grow spiritually by study how to hear God's voice, walking and talking with God daily through life from the day they leave Camp Hope. Teens may come to one or both camps each week, earning them three college credits from the university. Each week is $199, so register your team now. Scholarships are available. Go to our Contact Us page and let us know your interest or call us at the ranch, 423-973-1114. Space is limited. And now, as we do before every class we do here at Hope Retreat Ranch, we go into praise, worship, Prayer and meditation. What do we do? This is a hard one to meditate on. My God said you'll turn it around. We were just talking about that this afternoon. Turning evil into good. I believe that was in your hand. John Maxwell here. Welcome to Minute with Maxwell. That is your statement of strength today. We're either today, right now, in your life, my life, we're either preparing or we are repairing. Where are now, you? one sets up tomorrow for success, to be honest with you. The other sets up today for failure. If we are repairing, we can't even get into tomorrow. At best, what we're doing is trying to fix today because of something we allowed yesterday. But if we're preparing, it means that we're making the best of today so that we can guarantee tea that tomorrow's going to be a success. I think that's essential during a crisis because a crisis has a tendency to come in like a tornado, a hurricane, and just scatter and mess stuff up and wreck lives. And I just want you to know, don't let it happen. That's right. Take each day at a time. Today matters. Make today count. I wrote a book on that. Hmm. One day, 
Don't try to take care of the next week in the crisis. It will overwhelm you. Just take care today and prepare well. Tomorrow will come. It will get a little better. Thanks for being with me today on Minute with Max. We're in a crisis. What do we do? According to... That's what most people are doing. We prepare. Be prepared for it. Be prepared for it. How do you prepare for something like this? Prepare it. Well, you got a paid sabbatical, actually. Why not use it to get closer to God? Hmm. Because God has taken America back to God. You're either going to join up or you're going to get left behind. Where do you want to be? He's sharing the vision we have. Mm-hmm. Okay? Just him sharing it, not Randall sharing it. Okay. He's probably better at it than I am. He's been at it longer. Reality called friendship, communion, that's represented in something that we call prayer. Prayer, unfortunately, ends up as a religious tag for an activity instead of the actual friendship, fellowship, conversation to have with God. It's two-sided. And the backbone of life is the fact that every one of us called out to the Lord and He heard us. If you were to take every person in this room and reduce us down to one common denominator, it would be that one thing. We called out in the name of the Lord and He heard us. That whole relationship of God and man and that 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 he has longed for to be close. He made us in his image so that together we could commune and fellowship together. That that he has such passion for is just is called fellowship. It's called communion. When I talk about when I teach on fellowship in the church, fellowship member to member, I always define it as the exchange of life. It's the fact that when I meet with my friend, I'm able to pour into them, but they're able to pour into me. It goes both ways. It's not pulpit to audience. It is it is actual relationship that is seen by me giving you something that costs me something and then in return receiving from you. That's fellowship. Well, it's from God to man and man to God as well. So the strength of the life is prayer. It's communion. It's fellowship, friendship with God. But the strength of the backbone of prayer is this one simple phrase in what we refer to as the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And it goes on from there. It's not really the Lord's Prayer. It's not an appropriate title, but it helps us all to know what we're talking about. It's not the Lord's Prayer because in that prayer is the confession of sin, and he had none. He is eternal. What did you just say? It all boils down to the Lord's Prayer. Yes. I think I've mentioned that we should start every prayer with the Lord's Prayer. Mm-hmm. And what is the beginning of the Lord's Prayer? And I find this very interesting. Jesus was only asked once and he only taught his disciples one time how to pray. Mm-hmm. What's the beginning of the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in I would be thy name. I would be thy name. First of all, you have to give dignity to the name of God. Mm-hmm. He rules. Yes, I would be forever. And he will rule forever. Mm-hmm. Then, then how does it go? Uh, the kingdom come, the will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Really? Did he mean it? Mm-hmm. Yep. On earth as it is in heaven. Why in the world would Jesus Christ want us to pray to his Father that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because he wants us to live in the kingdom on earth. You, you already looked at my cheat sheet, didn't you? No. <laughs> Been taught well. Been taught well. That's exactly it. Do most professed Christians believe that? That his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, the ones that have ex- been studying experience God and other <laughs> good teachings that we've been yeah. exposed to. Amen. 
uh, you can live physically on this earth from within his kingdom. And I don't understand why in the world that the New Age people, the, the psychic mediums, know more about the spiritual world than the church does. We started teaching Christianity intellectually versus relational. It's all about relationship with him and with the body. It amazes me how they've been teaching Christianity intellectually for so long now, they've become stupid. <laughs> I, I to agree with you, but I agree with you. You hate to agree with me? <laughs> I'm just saying it's, bad, it's sad, really. You know, when I was growing up, though, it wasn't, you know, nobody thought it was funny. Nobody thought it was, they took stuff like that serious. I mean, it was. You think it's funny now? No, I'm just saying, a lot of these churches, you go in and say, well, so-and-so can heal so-and-so, that they would, some of them would laugh at you. Mm -hmm. How long have we been going? Live these video tape in months. Healing's right here. Yours. I said healing's right here, and there's probably someone needs some kind of healing out there. He simply don't believe it anymore. I think if you don't, I died. Don't you understand that, Steve? No, I, don't. I disagree with that. Why? Because I know there is a God. You've experienced yeah. God. I know there is a God. I mean, I've seen times that I've been alone with no family, nobody to have my back. And I've seen times I've been slept, spent the night in ditches and barns, nobody there to have my back. But We don't you know. know how many times He's protected us yeah. from stuff we didn't yeah. even know was about to happen. Exactly. Thanks for a moment. Two cars, each going 60 miles an hour, and opposite each other, and passing within inches of each other. And, and we do it every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could be our number any day. I was coming up road one night. That takes the protective hand of God in itself. Yeah. How many times has it happened to you that you're going over there and all of a sudden you just jerked it back in. I've had a lot more now. <laughs> well, got, I hate to do this to you. Uh, understand these videotapes are just to give you an example of what you're missing by not joining us <coughs> on our live streaming video platform. So we're going to have to cut you out of the message. Hopefully at the end our discussion will hit the high points. Uh, but we don't. We don't ever hit all, everything. Did I do it? <coughs> the phone's on you. Oh, should you? Yeah, go ahead. I know all of you know how to use a smartphone. Well, I mean, my gosh, even the broke people that don't even have money to pay for recovery, I have to take their smartphone away from them before I check them out. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, how is it that you can afford a smartphone? Walmart's got them. We, you got to pay for them. Well, I know that. How much would you say your drug habit used to be? Let's not go there. I know with me it was several thousand dollars a week. Oh, but you can't afford a recovery? <sighs> really? So I know you know how to use the telephone. The phone number here to get a live link is 757 
six three six eight one <laughs> six three. So, Jonas, wait, anybody got anything there? Sounds this. good, Dad. Okay. Will of God be done <coughs> on earth as it is in heaven? And that's the backbone of all prayer. The Lord answers every prayer that we pray, except for those that violate our purpose. Chris Gore reminded us some time ago, or actually taught us, that Jesus never taught on what to do with answered, unanswered prayers. Because it was never written into the equation. He designed you in fellowship with him to move his heart and to bring about his invasion. Yeah. So today I want to talk to you about heaven invading earth. Back before man was created, there were three archangels. There was Michael, there was Gabriel, and Lucifer. There was a rebellion in heaven. Satan, Lucifer, wanted to be worshipped. He wanted to be exalted like God. He wanted to be seated on the throne and everyone to exalt him. He was caught up in his own beauty, his own splendor, his own unique giftedness that he had. He got caught up and preoccupied with how God designed him and he wanted to be worshipped and he was booted out of heaven. And the Bible says the dragon took a third of the stars with him. I don't know if it means literally stars that out of what God created, a third of them were under the enemy's dominion. I don't know if it meant stars or if it was a specific reference to a third of the angels fell with him. Regardless, we know that planet Earth became a place where the devil and his uh, entourage, uh, they, had, they had habitation here. And in that rebellion, God decided to defeat the devil through people, yeah. human beings that he would create in his own image, who chose to worship him by choice. So here, the Lord with a word, with a breath, could destroy all the powers of darkness quite easily. But he instead chose, since the devil wanted to be worshipped, he chose to make humanity in his own likeness, in his own image, and raise up a company of people on planet Earth that would worship him by choice. And through those, there would be defeat on all the powers of darkness. The devil has never been a threat to God. The devil is not the opposite of God. He's the opposite of Michael. He's a created being with extremely limited powers. In fact, his plug has already been pulled, so it's diminishing as we speak. But it doesn't mean he has no doesn't mean he has no power, but he does have no authority. It's like cutting a branch off a tree. It still may be green, but it is dead. It just don't know it yet. So here the Lord raised creates, he, he comes to planet earth and the Bible says it's formless without void it says the Holy Spirit hovered over the surface of the waters and then God spoke and the creation took place I don't know how all this works out but what I do know is that in this place he planted a garden, a place that was absolutely perfect and it was the right size for two people to manage he put Adam and Eve who he created, put them in that garden and then he gave them a job he gave them a commission he said be fruitful have, have children, excuse me, be productive with your life. Be fruitful, multiply, have children who have children who have children, subdue the earth. Subdue is a military term. It describes the fact that outside of this garden where there's absolute perfect rest and perfect divine order, outside of that is chaos. And so as this first family has children who have children who have children, as they multiply, they need more room and they have greater capacity for management. This is a concept that's big in the heart of God when he told Israel, I will not drive out the enemies of the promised land all by all at once. I'm going to do it little by little. Why? Because if I do it all at once, when the, where the enemies were, the beasts will come in, they'll become too numerous for you, and you won't be able to obtain a victory. So the Lord says, I'm going to release it to you little by little. Here with Adam and Eve, they were to have children who would have children. And as they did, they were to expand the boundaries of the garden until the entire planet was covered with absolute perfect divine order. And through that, there would be the complete um, uh, uh, disruption to the powers of darkness and their work on planet Earth. But instead, Adam and Eve sinned. They partook of the forbidden fruit. And here it is. We have this amazing 
action that takes place. God comes to Adam and he gives them this commission to subdue the earth. And he puts keys in their hands. And he gives them the purpose for their being. And there was the intimacy, there was the relationship, the delight. I you were sharing. You were saying, I said more or less what he's saying is Jesus' disciples discipled other people and generations. Their generation. disciples. Since, since Jesus died. And now the churches nowadays, they're all divided. And they become what they That's become. That's because we don't agree with you on the day of the week that's supposed to be the Sabbath. Or we don't agree with you because you don't speak in tongues. Or we don't agree with you because of this or that. Or somebody like a drum, somebody don't like Now, who are they bringing the glory to? Himself. Devil. You think about it, yeah, I mean, you know. I mean, I know everybody's different in their own way, but... Nobody can come together, you know what I mean? A lot of people really don't. Can't. A lot of people Why can't we unite under just the two greatest men? You want to speak in tongues? Fine. If you want to lay down on the floor and laugh and cry or whatever you want to do, that's fine. Whatever is working for you. God wants you to be what God created you to be. But a lot of people, <laughs> Catholic or whatever or this or that, a lot of people join different churches because their mom and daddy believe a certain way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Have you ever heard me say if I was raising children today, I would encourage them to check out every religion on the planet before making the very serious decision to make Jesus Christ your Lord. I want to say something like, I want to say something though like, uh, try the different spirits, see which one is good or something to that effect. Yeah, sure. I mean, I know, I know. Test, he's talking about testing the spirits. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because there are the mystic good. psychics out there or good and know more about the spiritual world than the church does on a large scale. The way I took it, try different religions, see which, which is good and which is... What about the sorcerers back in the Old Testament? that advised kings. But God influenced that advice to give to the king because God has authority over the king. Mm -hmm. He can use a sorcerer as well as he can an uneducated, dumbass Christian. You're going to edit that out. <laughs> Yeah, but you know what? I think... Excuse me. Dumbass professed Christian. <laughs> you know what? I have actually went to some churches. I believe they're just... I mean, maybe God forgive me if I'm wrong. Some of them are... Just, Why did you want to talk, talk about everything I don't want to talk about? Well, I don't know. It just came to my mind. I was wondering that myself. Some, some churches that say they're churches, though. Do you remember the original question? He's taught more today than he's ever taught. What's going on? Yeah, but there are some churches. Oh, wait till you get fired up. Must be. Never mind. Must be all the cutting of the trees. <laughs> what was the original question? Uh, about the disciples. Or which one? My only original question. You have to refresh my memory. <laughs> you remember it? What you heard we want to take. See how distractions to get us all on. You said, remember what now? Your original question? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't involve you be mad? <laughs> Why wouldn't involve you be mad? <laughs> I don't know which way to go. <laughs> <coughs> the disciples, discipling disciples, discipling disciples. Yeah. How does that, how does the vision of Hope Retreat Global fit in to... It's kind of like that day you got my count, you got the calculator out. Yep. If one goes and says something to one, then he goes and says something to another, and that one goes and goes and goes and goes. Well, by Tammy end, wasn't here for that. By the end of that, that the year, the whole United States knows. We have five people in here. Mm -hmm. Six in the house. 
let's just say, hypothetically, that the six of us get excited about the authority, the keys Jesus gave to, them, to the kingdom. We got so excited, the six of us tonight, decided, yeah, we can all commit to going out and finding one other person in the next 30 days that get just as excited. <coughs> so why don't the churches do that? Does that have something to do with the question? I don't know. I just, uh... And they came in to the kingdom. In 30 days, we'd have how many? Mm. Twelve. Yeah, we done that thing. Well, I was going to say 112. Oh. And those twelve, the next 30 days, were excited enough to commit again to going out and getting one other person. Yeah. Oh. The end of 60 days, we'd have how many? 24. Okay. And all 24 of them. 50. Got so excited about it that they were all committed to doing the same thing the next 30 days. This would take us to 90 days. Yeah. That would give us 48. I don't know. If we just did that in Sneeple, I assure you, 48 people on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ in the mood of the Holy Spirit of God could transform Sneeple. Yeah. But let's clear this up first. If you keep going at that rate, in three years, you would have better than the population of the United States today. So getting back to your, what was your question? Why doesn't the church do that? A lot of them don't. The church is. I'm saying they just wait till somebody walks through the door if they ever do. Well, that started in the Jesus movement in the 70s. Yeah. You know what with a bunch of hippies. You know that? They wait for it to come to them. What if the next move of the Holy Spirit got started with the gay community? Yeah, I don't know. Hippies were disliked as much as the gay community is today. In fact, they, we went to a revival, didn't we, Michael? Yes. One of the people who came out of that movement, they're still going in that movement. That movement done come and died. Mm -hmm. Revival should continue until everyone has grown in to the perfection of Christ. That is God's heart. Why else would he give you authority over the earth? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's certainly something that makes you go, hmm. There's something else to think about. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right. I see a lot of churches that the pastors... Yeah, I smoke. Yeah, I do too. But I see a lot of pastors, though, and I've seen it for a long time now, and I'm, I ain't want to speak. I mean, I, I ain't nobody. But the only time you see them is in church on Sunday. They take up a whatever and tell everybody and pat each other on the back and they're gone. You don't see okay, them. Okay, maybe that didn't mean for this to get into a church pastor. I'm sorry. But what I'm saying is... Steve's agging me on the... Since, since, I mean, you kind of draw this stuff out of me a little bit. Some of them act like they play church. You know what I'm saying? Well, let me ask you this, Steve. Have you matured enough in Christ to love them anyway? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, there's some of them that... The only time you see them is there on Sunday. I mean, I've actually passed by preachers that I've seen them on Sunday and then they see them out of store. And then walk the opposite direction. Thanks. No. Yeah. Not a preacher around here. Apologize for our 
viewing audience on videotape, uh, again, we can only upload so much content, so if you're missing a lot, just join us on our live streaming video platform. Well, then we have <coughs> two teachers in the room with us. Can you give the uh, message, Bill, to The whole message? Yeah. No. <laughs> very complex, mm. but very interesting, right there? Yeah. Uh, well, that's interesting. What do we get out of it? Well, Jesus came. Jesus uh, was, sent, was, came, was sent to Earth to uh, tell us how to commune with God. Uh, taught us uh, let the kingdom of God come. He came to establish his kingdom. Kingdom right? is right, and to uh, defeat the. Uh, is defeat the devil through us. Um, that's because he was because when he God created the created the earth, uh, we were to uh, he could have just wiped the devil out. Satan out was just probably just the word. Satan here before the world was born. Mm -hmm. Yep. As, he, as Bill said, there was three angels, uh, Michael, Gabriel, and, and Zayn, or Lucifer at the time, he was known. And, uh... They were cast out of heaven. Yep, took a third of the heaven, heaven, uh, heavenly hosts with him. Uh, to reside in the void. Oh, so he's on there first. So God created mankind. Mankind. Mm -hmm. To do what? Well, he was to... Uh, well, to glorify God, wasn't it? To defeat Satan. Satan. Did everybody get that? Yep. That's our job. That's our assignment. That's what we were created for. So why do we so often join him instead? Well, because... We were uh, made in God's image. Made in God's image. Satan. Uh, in the him. beginning, before Adam and Eve sinned, we had authority. Yep. And where our main pro okay. and our main job was to multiply and subdue the earth. Mm -hmm. Even though we were, you know, we were putting the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve were put in the Garden of Eden and they were to multiply and subdue the earth. Right. Which was at the time, um, say, and did and we were, and we did it and it was meant to be done at like in small increments, like uh, the children of Israel. When God told them to take in to defeat enemies. He could have just wiped all the enemies out all at once, but by the time. Um, the Through people. warfare, conventional means, God could wipe Satan off the planet. Right. But he created mankind to defeat Satan. Right. Light always defeats darkness. darkness. Always defeats darkness. Yes. You know, I think it's funny, I, I got to think after, this is the first video that I've really seen that explained a lot more than some of the other videos, you know what I mean? It says that man was... Is this the first one you're paying attention to? No, it ain't. No, it ain't. It says, though, that man will do greater works than what I did. Mm -hmm. and Why in, is that? And in my mind, though, <clears throat> I think that's hard to believe. And I've been thinking that for a long time. It's hard to believe. And even though he was Jesus' son, and, and this is the first time I really caught it, that he was put on earth as a man, which I knew he, he gave did, away but all his authority. But he gave away all his authority. The authority he did have, he received from the God. 
But what I'm saying without is, him, you can do nothing. But what I'm saying is, even though he was Jesus' son, I'm sure it has something to do with it. But I guess where he kept his life to where you know he stayed and lived in the presence he of lived the in Father. the Spirit. That's what I'm saying. He didn't. Do he nothing. lived in the kingdom. But what I'm saying is, he didn't do no wrong. And I guess it's a choice that we all have. Mm -hmm. If we hadn't have done wrong in the beginning, after we born, you know. But well, we've been born again. But what I'm saying is, though, that's why we should live in the environment of repentance. Because we're going to mess up again. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying sure. is, there is, some, you think, there is some people out there that, you know, I do believe that they can lay hands on somebody and heal them. Yeah. And I believe it's through God. But what I'm saying is, though, to see that, you know, Jesus didn't have no no sin at all. But what I'm saying is, he says that you will do greater works than that. So I believe there is still people out there that can heal, even though there's a lot of fakes out there. My question to you is, why are we able to do more than Jesus. Can you help me out with this, Michael? Why are we able to do more than Jesus? Because he told, told us we could. David? Because he said we'll do greater works than... He did tell us, yeah. But why? I guess it's for people that's living close to God. Why do, why do, does do you he, have a comment on this? Why does he want to do <laughs> Because he gave us the authority so that we could um, Jesus, reach more people. as a man, was confined to wherever he was at the time. <laughs> through prayer. <coughs> and him sitting at the right hand of the Father. We can bring healing or breakthrough to someone in China right now. For Jesus to do his healing, he'd have to be in China. Does everybody get that? Yes. Yeah, well, what I'm saying is... We're not limited any longer. Even though you're not limited, you still have to have the faith to believe it, that it is possible that God you're can do You're using it. that but word again, aren't you? No, I'm saying you have to have the faith... Yes, you do. ...to believe that God can do it, because if you don't have that faith... It's like things to be seen. Faith has a mustard seed. I'm saying faith has everything to do with it. Yeah, yeah. It does. But the victory is already won. Mm -hmm. Kingdom's established. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and the more you experience God, the greater your faith will become. Saying I made a lot of mistakes, but I mean I still have faith to believe that. <laughs> okay. Talk. I'm just saying some of these things are, are, they're all good, but what I'm saying is there's some of them that I guess touch me more than, maybe it meant something to me and didn't mean to y'all. I mean, I don't know. You got me. So what did it mean to you? I just thought, you know, them, him using the word, you know, things that, you know, that you do outside of God is dead works. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I ain't heard even a preacher or even going to all these other places with everybody else and with you. I ain't heard that word in many years. For many preachers. Mm -hmm. I mean, first a preacher in Sneeville that's mentioning it lately, I like to go. I don't let them come up here and tell me I like to go see them mention it again. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, like when I went to church as a little kid, they used that word and other words, you know, all the time, like it was nothing. Okay. And what I'm saying is, though, even though I made mistakes, I came from a Baptist background. And okay. It doesn't mean, you know, I'm nobody to say anything about anybody, but I guess when I get something on my heart, I talk about it, you know? Well, if you don't, if you've never experienced God, you're going to produce dead work. Right. Because you're going to not have the faith to carry on. Right. If you don't know how to recognize and hear God's voice, you're going to have dead works. Right. Because you don't even, how can you have any kingdom works if you can't even hear from them. Right. I mean, I agree with you. Yeah. Ask the average preacher today. What's God been talking to you about? Uh, say this morning. To 
We personally are. Yeah, try it out. Well, I mean, that's just like me. I mean, you know. Go knock it on the preacher door. He told me to go paint this morning. <laughs> <laughs> he told me to cut some trees. He <laughs> <laughs> was pretty clear about it. <laughs> you didn't ask what God had spoken to me this morning. Well, as far as I you go. You can ask me to post any morning. Especially when I come in here fresh. God's done had a major conversation with me. And what has God talked to you about this morning? Huh? Why is God talking to you? You gotta ask me in the morning. I thought you gotta wait for tomorrow. Mm. I'm gonna have to write that on my to do list. I'm gonna be on my films though. Why do you suppose today there's no one who's experiencing a difficulty in life? Have any fear whatsoever of judgment from friends, of thinking he's a freak? We're going to a psychic for help. But almost a shame for telling them I went to the kingdom of God for help. I'm not ashamed of it. I think you'd be ashamed of that. I'm not ashamed of that. You feel what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I'm talking about our culture out there. You know, there's a lot of cultures they then they line up at psychics. Go, go to a carnival or a fair and line up at the psychic. Pay him. Uh, yeah. Pay him to say I don't see him paying to get any churches around there. That's true. They believe more in doctors than they do in God. Yeah. And I see myself. Why, why do people in recovery have no problem in paying a mental health professional? They ain't got no money to pay for recovery. The Christ. You know, I even had a preacher that had one of my residents locked up. Well, here we go. And told me, and this is a local preacher, told me that he, this kid, kid needed professional help. Mm. And I said, I guess more professional than Christ that you preach every. Uh, is there a more professional than that? Mm. No, I mean, so that's why I'm saying that. I know. Personal breakthroughs become corporate breakthroughs. What does that mean? Mm. Well, if it happens to you, then it can happen to the rest. <coughs> it edifies the body, mm. the whole body of Christ. You know. I've heard people say, you know, God don't work anymore. But how can people go and pray for somebody that's got cancer, say, throughout their body, and the next day or a week later, doctors can't find a sign of it and they'll be healed. And and not being able to explain it medically or anything. Will you tell me? Okay. I, I used an illustration earlier last time you asked that question. All I'm saying is God still works. I mean, yeah. No tell them that. I mean, I know he does. I mean, you know, even though... Tell the person who's watching this video I say it's that uh, won't write down her phone number and call that needs a healing. Well, I put it like this. I don't care what church you sit in or what church you go to or what church you believe in. I've been to a bunch of different churches, you know, and I'm not saying I'm right or I'm wrong. But it says try the different spirits and see which one is, you know, right or yeah okay and I think it even says that somewhere in the Bible don't it mm -hmm. see which ones are right you know as far as really being right with God Paul talking to the church in Corinth I'm just saying if you were if because you, at that time there were a lot of false prophets and I'm just saying if you've only ate hamburger all your life and you don't know anything else how do you know what a steak tastes like you don't exactly maybe people are happy with I mean, people get in the mindset that there's only one way and it's their way and there's no other way. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that. Well, there's no other way but God's will. Well, I'm just saying. I'm sorry. But like all the churches are professing they're going to God's way. What I'm saying is, though, if it's God's though way. Though they can't even hear from God. If it's God's way, if it's God's way, though, why, why are all the churches divided? You tell me. 
I mean, we all I we that. all are men and women, and I'm saying there there's some bad people. No, there. there's these shoes. Well, there's this, that, and the other. <laughs> what I'm saying is, and I can laugh now. <laughs> you know, he's shining even, all the He couldn't even laugh when he came. I'm just saying, I'm no preacher. I'm, I'm no I'm no good person. I'm trying to be a better person. But I believe, you know, if if, if you've only ate. You know, like I said, hamburger all your life. How do you know what steak tastes like? Like if you've only well, I found I have life. found here in the mountains of East Tennessee a big um, tradition. Yeah, I mean, after all, our church has been here fifty years. I mean, that was just a. a have you had dead work so fifty years? <laughs> God dead in your church all 50 years? Ooh. It's like I said earlier. Did you even have a a breath of the Holy Spirit of the living God? Mm. Was there not a little breeze come through it's, ever? It's like I said earlier. <laughs> and I know people are watching this. Yeah. But what I'm saying is... They're probably saying... Oh, they may, <laughs> yeah, they may be saying that. I thought you had counsel yeah. earlier. <laughs> they, may, they may be saying that. I saw you in counsel. They may be saying that, but you know what? I'll guarantee you, if somebody would admit to it, there's more than, than just me that has went out to church somewhere and seen the preacher out in the store during a weekday or something, and then go the opposite direction to ignore them, and they show up Sunday and be patted on the back and an hour later doors close to church. See? <coughs> I have a preacher that Run a mission down down oh, there. Sure. <laughs> and one of my residents who left here to want to do it his own way was over there visiting Just don't talk about for his one meal a week he passes out because yeah. his family owns the one grocery store in town. Mm -hmm. I thought people got hungry seven days a week though. Well, uh, not in Sneak. <laughs> In Sneagle, I hear you can live on a meal a week. At any rate, this guy went to his mission for his one no, meal a week. On town, so. Listen to this. Right. And he said, well, Randall's not with me tonight. And this preacher said, well, good, we don't have to put up with his drama. <laughs> Well, let me tell you something if you're watching. God is all about drama and he wants to rock your world. You're wild, right? <laughs> you're wild. <coughs> uh, you know, God is the drama king. Would you say it's pretty dramatic to have him raise people from the dead? That's drama, brother. Sitting around dead at your mission is death. You're wild. I'm not going there. Does anybody else have anything to do? <laughs> you know, it, then, no, it's said it all right there. Then That's good, Steve. Thank you. You're trying to shove me Good, man. Right. But don't I say somewhere... Trying to get this done for 10 o'clock. Oh, sorry, man. Don't I say I somewhere in the Bible about yeah. you're supposed to... about Jesus fed mm, yeah. the people before he... he yes. disciples or yeah. preached to them? That has always been I mean, the philosophy at, uh, is how can, at the theology at Hope Tree. How can I Before we start trying to heal someone of their addiction, we try to feed them, let them rest up. I will say one it. thing: they do eat here. Yeah, yes, yeah. sir. I mean, I will say. And you that. did the first tonight. Huh? You did the first thing that I've ever seen done. You, you burn a whole chip up. <laughs> <laughs> Filled the whole thing up. <laughs> I ain't never seen that done. Uh -uh. Hey man, I'm working on chip. Too. Well, anyway, we're leaving you tonight, and we hope you join us on one of these free <laughs> or drastically reduced, discounted uh, spiritual transformation <laughs> seminary studies with us. So, as my wife says, <laughs> bye bye for now. Well, I think we should stand with Brother Lee. Look how that. Yeah. This out as a concept and end with this before we pray. Everything that Jesus did was practical. 
It was ridiculously profound. It, it would get the most educated people, get their heads spinning. But it was stuff that cold-hearted fishermen could learn easily. I, I love that about the gospel, is it's, it, to be really frank, uh, the mentally retarded can live it perfectly. Because it's, it's not dependent on human intellect, and yet it uses it as a tool when it's sanctified, when it's surrendered. Jesus taught in John 6. He, he took the disciples through a bizarre experience through a sermon that offended thousands. And then he, he concluded with a statement. He said, he said, my words to you are spirit and their life. My words. The word of God became flesh, but when he spoke, the word became spirit. Why is that important? Because the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom is in the spirit. And when you say what the Father is saying, you just change the atmosphere of the room you're in. Yeah. Why? Because words become spirit. When Jesus stood before the crowd and he said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. <coughs> it's within reach. It's in the here. It's in now. How did it get put there? It got put there through decree. What wasn't there a minute ago was there after he spoke. Because words become spirit. I want to stir this up in you because our decree has everything in the world to do with our purpose and our assignment in life. In Mark 16, 20, it talks about those who would boldly confess the Lord that God would back it up with miracles, signs, and wonders. The same principles in uh, Acts 4, 29, where there's this prayer. God, grant your bond servants boldness while we speak your word and you extend your hand to heal. In other words, we're, we'll be bold in the confession of faith, but we need you to back it up with, with miracles, signs, and wonders. There's something to do with a people that have an ear for the voice of God. And just all we want to do is just declare what he's declaring. Say what he's saying. Confess what he's confessing. For us to take that that gospel of the kingdom, the perfectly, brilliantly good news, and declare it everywhere we go. Because in that decree, words become spirit. And when the spirit is present, he manifests the kingdom. And when the kingdom is manifest, everybody's options have changed. Everybody's options have changed. All restrictions and limitations of the moment have vanished. Because a kingdom without limits has just become manifest. Father, make that reality. Make that that is so true in your eyes, true in ours. And before the day is over, I ask that everybody in this room would have the privilege of saying what you're saying. Just the simple confidence of hearing from you and saying what you're saying. I pray as well for a breakthrough anointing, an anointing of boldness, where you extend your hands to heal, and the breakthroughs come to people's lives, unprecedented breakthroughs. We pray for it in Jesus' name.